Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Public Finance. In this part, we are going to learn about negative production externalities. This is the most important part because in this part, we'll learn how the presence of externalities will alter demand and or supply curves. So once you understand how negative production externalities work, in the next part, we'll talk about other types of externalities. And we will talk about positive production externalities, negative and positive consumption externalities. However, once you understand this part, it becomes really easy to understand others. Let's get started. Let's talk about negative externalities. So we're going to focus on negative production externalities today. So here's an example. A profit, pi is for profit, remember? Profit, profit. I'm going to try to write cursive which I cannot. <laughs> Pi is for profit. Profit maximizing steel firm as a byproduct of its production dumps sludge into a river. Sludge is like, a, you know, dense accumulated uh, waste. All right. So fishermen downstream are harmed. All right. So $100 worth of fish per unit of steel are being lost. As the fish die, their profits fall. Okay, so negative production externality happens in this case because fishermen downstream are adversely affected and they're not compensated for this harm. Okay, and steel factory, steel firm is profiting from this production. However, it's not compensating for the loss of fishermen. Okay, so let's talk about each party's incentives in this situation. So private marginal cost, this is the direct cost to producers of producing additional unit of goods. So this is basically measured by the supply curve, we'll see. Social marginal cost is the private marginal cost plus any costs associated with the production of the good that are imposed on others. So this, for instance, if you have negative production externality, it's going to be plus marginal damage you cause people. Private marginal benefit is the direct benefit to consumers of consuming additional unit of good by the customer. And social marginal benefit is going to be private marginal benefit plus any costs associated with the consumption of good that are imposed on others. So I highly recommend you write these down and you understand what these are. So... As you can see, this is a supply and demand curve. This is the quantity of steel produced, price of the steel, okay? Supply curve is by the steel factory. Supply will always be equal to private marginal cost, okay? If you look at the demand for steel, this is consumers, us, buying the steel downward sloping demand curve. So demand is always going to be equal to private marginal benefits. So keep this in mind. These will always be equal to supply will be equal to private marginal cost. Demand will always be equal to private marginal benefit. In this case, we don't have any consumption externalities. Okay, because we don't have any consumption externalities, you're going to have Social marginal benefit equal to private marginal benefit. Whenever there's an externality in the production side, private marginal cost won't be equal to social marginal cost. So whenever you have an externality, if it's in the production side, it's going to shift your social marginal cost curve. It won't be equal to private marginal or supply curve. Here we don't have... As I said, we don't have any consumption externality. Therefore, demand is equal to private marginal benefit, social marginal benefit. Okay. So the steel firm sets private marginal benefit equal to private marginal cost to find its privately optimal profit maximizing output. So if steel factory doesn't care about the fishermen, right? It just focuses on how much should I produce? The steel factory should produce Q1. And the prices should charge per steel in the market should be P1. The yellow triangle is the consumer and producer surplus at the level of production Q1. Okay, so this is privately optimal level. 
All right, this framework ob obviously does not capture the harm done to the fishery, okay? So this is the marginal damage curve, represents fisheries harm per unit. So we said this is $100, right? Per unit of steel produced, you are harming fish that is worth 100 units, okay? So the social marginal, how do we find social marginal cost? Social marginal cost is going to be higher than the private marginal cost. It is going to include private marginal cost plus this marginal damage caused by this steel factory. So we are going to add this marginal damage vertically over private marginal cost. So social marginal cost is... Private marginal cost plus marginal damage represents the cost of society. So this is socially optimal level. So from the social point of view, right, you need to look at the intersection of always social marginal cost, social marginal benefit. So this is really, remember, this is really different from what we studied in principles of uh, microeconomics class where there was no pollution so this is the social optimal level of steel that you, that shows fewer units of steel being produced and price of steel to be higher p2 okay so how do we find social mar socially optimal level of steel production we look at the intersection of social uh, social marginal cost and social marginal benefit Okay, the steel firm overproduces from the society's point of view. What, what does that mean? Because steel firm privately produces Q1. However, socially, it should be producing fewer units, Q2. So steel firm overproduces by this much, by this distance. Okay, so again, the steel firm overproduces from society's viewpoint. Okay, so this red triangle is the deadweight loss from private production level, the area between social marginal cost and social marginal benefit, and the differences between these quantities of socially optimal level of output and privately uh, chosen level that we see by the steel firm. So th these are everything in words. Steel firms privately optimal production source, private marginal benefit equals private marginal cost, which yields a quantity at P1. Steel firm emits pollution. So steel firms emitted pollution, right? It emits pollution and this will damage fishery. This is represented by the marginal damage curve. Ideally, right, in a perfect world, fisheries... Let's say I'm a fisher person, fisherman. Uh, fishery prefers marginal damage to be zero. I really don't want a polluted water. I don't. I don't want to fish in a polluted river. But this, if you want zero marginal damage, that means we're not going to produce anything, right? This will yield zero steel production. Of course, this is not for the best interest of the steel firm. So, folks, I know it sounds crazy, but some pollution could be optimal, all right? So, for instance, Texas A&M Corpus Christi is where I teach, where I'm a full professor of economics. Texas A&M Corpus Christi is in Corpus Christi, and we have so many uh, oil refineries in this town, okay? So, we do have some pollution, but one reason those refineries chose Corpus Christi is that it's a very windy city, so it kind of, of course, you know, of course it's not the perfect solution, but it, it's easier in a place where the air is easier than a place where the air is stagnant. But long story short, we do have some pollution. It does have some health effects. However, as we said, zero pollution is not optimal. So social marginal cost accounts for both the direct cost to the steel firm and the indirect harm to the fishery, okay? So social marginal cost is going to be higher than private marginal cost by marginal damage level. So to get the socially optimal quantity of steel Q2 and price P2, you're going to equalize social marginal cost to social marginal benefit, okay? 
So this is what this is exactly word descrip description of what we did here. Okay. So again, if we to uh, delete everything, erase everything, I want you to be able to draw all this. Okay. So for sure, let me give you an example. Let's say I am an owner of a nightclub. Okay. So the size of the quantity of still is replaced by quantity of customers. I am serving customers. Okay. And this is the price of nightclub admittance. Okay, so there is a fee to get into the nightclub. So it, it, it is kind of loud. So the marginal damage I'm causing to the neighborhood is, let's say, $1,000 per customer. Okay, this is a little bit steep. I'm going to lower this. So $10 per customer, that's the marginal damage, and this is the number of customers. So the bigger the club, right, the more people inside, I am blasting the music. You can actually work on this example for me and do this whole, the entire analysis with this example, okay? All right, so the socially optimal quantity is less production of still or fewer customers in nightclub. But the steel firm will be worse off, but fishery will be better off. The damage to the fishery is reduced as well. So graphically, this is going to be the area under marginal damage curve from Q2 to Q1. So reduction in the damage to, I'm going to show you real quick, reduction to the, so this is my Q2, I'm going to mark this, Q2, and I'm going to go back. So reduction in the damage to fishery will be this rectangle. So the difference between socially optimal and the privately chosen level and any area below marginal damage curve. So the damage to the fisheries have been reduced by this rectangle if this steel factory indeed produces the socially optimal level. Dead weight loss from the original production level is graphically illustrated by the yellow tri triangle I showed you in between the social marginal cost and social marginal benefit curves from Q2 to Q1. So, in this case, social marginal benefit is exactly equal to private marginal benefit because there's no consumption externality here, okay? So in next part, we are going to talk about another type of negative externality. This is going to be negative consumption externality. So this is, for instance, my consumption of something is hurting third parties. Okay, so we are going to study that in next part. But before we move on to that, I want you to, number one, hit the like on this video. It really gets like sparkly sign and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any videos from me. I'll see you later. Bye.